Hello and welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm here at the Culinary School of Fort Worth where I will be joined by President Scott Wade, as well as guest Natalie Stalmach from Casa of Tarrant County and Kim Sisson of Collections Fine Jewelry. Let's go. And now I'm here with Scott Wade, who's president of the Culinary School in Fort Worth. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Michael. I'll bet a lot of people actually don't know that a culinary school exists here in Fort Worth. So tell us a little bit about how it got started and then how you came to be a part of the culinary school. Sure, yeah. And that, that statement makes me sad. I, we hear it a lot that yeah. we're the best kept secret in town. That's and true. Uh, we're trying to get the word out more. But so how I got involved, it started with a conversation uh, with Bill Bird, uh, who was the previous owner. Bill and Judy uh, started the school way back in 1988. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I believe it started as cooking classes in, in Judy's home. And over the years, they advanced it, turned it into a career and vocational school. Uh, but anyways, Bill and I had lunch one day, and really, I just wanted to sit down with him to pick his brain about being an entrepreneur and what that's like, what it's like being a business owner. And that conversation led to him saying, you know, he, he was later in his career and wanting, uh, wanting someone to take over the school. And so uh, one thing led to another in that same year. Uh, we ended up buying the school from him. And what year was that? It was 2014. 2014. I mean, a lot of people probably don't know that I actually attended back in 2014, I think right when you took over ownership and it was just right. down the street. Correct. Yeah. So it was at the, uh, what was the address down there? That was on Camp Bowie. 6100 Camp Bowie. So yeah. we were above La Madeline. That's right. Yeah. And that's, that's where it started and where it was when, when Judy and Bill had it. Correct. And then you moved to this new location. What's the address here? 6550 Camp Bowie. Camp Bowie. So when did you move here to this location? In 2016. 2016. Mm -hmm. So this is fine because we've got all the students behind us. We have all right. this that's working so people can see it's a, it's a culinary school. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what's an average day like for your students here? Sure. Yeah. So yeah. these students are all part of our nine month professional culinary program. Okay. And classes are five days a week, five hours a day. Okay. So they're here either from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 4 to 9 p.m. Okay. And we're, we're big Is that on so, I mean, kind of staggered so they can have other jobs and do other things? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So honestly, the morning class is our most popular time slot. Okay. Uh, but that evening class is for a lot of people that are working at eight to five or, you know, seven to four job right. and they, they come right after work and okay. come to that class. Do you, how do, what is the sort of composition of a student? Are, are people that have typical, as you said, eight to five jobs, so they might be an office job sure. and they want to do this at night? And are there other people, I guess, that maybe have restaurant jobs so they Exactly. Do, yeah. Okay. yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of students are working in the industry, either part-time or full-time, and then they're coming here. But really, we have three categories of students. We have our Students that are straight off high school, maybe they did culinary in high school, okay. or they're 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Then we have our people that have some experience in the industry, whether that's one to two years, and we've had some with 15 years of experience, uh, but they wanna come and get that formal training. And then we have our career changers, people that have been in the military or been in the business world, but love culinary and they decide to make that switch and pursue this as a career and, and that so that's what in that question is what are they walking away when they're done with the program right. what are they walking away with what kind of degree certification sure yeah, yeah. so our school is a accredited post-secondary career and vocational school so right. they get a certificate from us mm -hmm. they also get two industry certifications one is a serve safe manager certification. Okay. They have to pass that exam, but that, that's part of the program. And then our program is accredited by the American Culinary Federation. Okay. And so they get a certification from them as well. So a lot of them will maybe take this and go into a culinary field with the, with the technical degree. Is that, uh, yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. With the technical certification. And yeah, our hope and desire is that they go into the industry because they also get two months of on-the-job training mm -hmm. as part of the program, okay. something called externship, right. where we place them in the last two months in a restaurant or a hotel, maybe a food truck, and we customize that to what they want to do after school. To what they do. Is that part of the nine month or is it nine plus? So it's it, seven it's months in hands-on or correct. here and then two months hands-on in, in an environment. Correct. Yeah. Seven months here, two months with one of our externship partners. and we vet those partners. We have 50 or so relationships. 
okay. uh, with chefs in the community. That's great. And I mean, are there different tracks that you can take as part of the the, the, the degree? No. It's so all. this is one one okay. track. It's our professional culinary program. Okay. Now we do have uh, some other offerings. One is a uh, apprenticeship okay. program. That's where we partner directly with the employer. Okay. And so Fort Worth Club is one of our partners. Okay. That's a two year long apprenticeship. Okay. And then uh, Fort Works is another program where we partner with the Food Bank and Taste Project. Mm -hmm. and it's a 16 week training. It's free to the student and they get paid uh, for working during that time as well. That's great. That's great. And they're doing all the training here or they're doing training? They, for that one, they do it at the Food Bank the food and bank. then at uh, Taste Project. Okay. And, and this is, uh, you know, a, a topic uh, uh, today, I, I'm sure you produce a lot of food here. What happens with this food afterwards? Sure. Yeah. yeah so students get to they can't eat, eat it. Yeah, they, can't no, they, eat. they get to eat it. Uh, as long as I ate a lot as as long back as in the cooked. day. Yes, yeah. 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 So often after the hands-on piece, they'll go and sit in the classroom and enjoy what they've made. Uh, also, they'll get to take home a lot of food to their family. And mm -hmm. then uh, we donate the food scraps. So you know, for vegetables and fruit, fruit scraps donate that to the Tarrant Area Food Bank. Okay. There's a garden nearby and they use that to make compost. Compost and then mm -hmm. put it out in the garden. Okay. Right. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. What, you know, uh, outside taking the formal program, are there events or other things that happen here where people can, can come, that our viewers can come and be a part of this? Sure. Yeah, definitely the Forward Food and Wine Festival. Yep. We're, we're going to have a booth at the Rise and Shine okay. event. I believe that's Saturday, April 1st. Okay. So our instructors and students will be there so okay. they can come people can support that okay uh, also the first Fridays at the Modern Art Museum mm -hmm. uh, are we have several alumni and, and current students that work at the Cafe Modern okay and often Chef Jet over there will let our students uh, run with a menu on those first Fridays so definitely go check out uh, Cafe Modern as well sounds fun you hosting anything here? Any anything here too? Not not currently. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we've done some yeah. what we call culinary studio yeah. classes for yeah. the public. Yeah. Uh, so we're not we're not doing that yet this year, but maybe people can keep an eye on our website for event classes that we may do here. That's great. That's great. Well, Scott, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate you and what you're bringing to the Fort Worth community. We talked about this in a lot of different ways. Uh, that we need to get our, our students educated and maybe it's a technical or a vocational skill and this is, serves that purpose and, and puts them on a career path to success. So thanks for what you're doing. Great. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And now I'm joined by Natalie Stalmach, who's with CASA of Tarrant County. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. Tell people what CASA is. So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. Okay. And those advocates are volunteers from the community who sign up to advocate for children in foster care right here in our community in Fort Worth and in Tarrant County. Okay, so they work with kids and yes. work with judges in the court system. Absolutely. Explain a little bit about that. Yeah. So when you are a volunteer and you're assigned a case, uh, there could be one child, there could be a sibling group, but your role is to help, help that case move through the court system a little bit easier. Um, you make recommendations to the judge on what's in the best interest of the children, visit them at their foster home or relative's home, at school, advocate for them at school. Um, just be an extra set of eyes and ears for the judge so that they have the most information possible to make the most informed decision possible for what's best for these children. For these children, so it's not, they're in foster care they're in foster. or maybe they've been removed out of uh, difficult situations yes. and living with family members or something. Right. So the idea is y'all, really work with that child, understand their needs, and then advocate for them with the judge and into the court system. Right. There's yeah. so many moving pieces yeah. for kids when they're in foster care. They have mm -hmm. a caseworker, they have an attorney, they may be in foster care or living with a relative, then they may switch if they're in foster homes, they may switch foster homes, which means another family, another right. school. So there's so much constant change going on for children that have already endured trauma before they even came into foster care. And so we try to stabilize that for them, um, find some normalcy, find uh, soccer, enroll them in something to have them have that other experience a that normal other life kids, that they should be having life. anyway as a child. We don't think yeah. a kid in foster care should have a different life than any other child. Well, that leads me to this is CASA's 40th year yes. in operation. Uh, big, what success stories do you have from those 40 years? 
So our big focus right now is getting kids back with their families, um, back with their parents, and if that's not possible, with their relatives. And we've put a huge focus on that, particularly in the last decade. And just those stories that come out of finding relatives, getting kids back with their parents, and parents being able to go to parenting classes, get a stable job, get better housing, get their kids back, and move on with their lives. And if that's not possible, finding relatives and really having volunteers sort of dig into that and be kind of researchers and you know find a grandma in another state or an aunt uncle. Um, we had a sister that was 21 and took her brother that was a teenager in foster care and they were so lovely to meet with. You could see that bond and being the oldest you know of a sibling group myself yeah. just knowing what that would feel like. Keeping the family together. To keep making the family people together. Yeah, it, sure. It's so important. Um, and that's our goal. And those are my favorite success stories is when kids are able to be with their parents and with their family. And yeah, and so I, that is, as you pointed out, a goal is to find someone maybe that's still a blood relative right. that would want to take them right. versus going to a foster care right. system that, okay, that's wonderful. How, just for our viewers, how pervasive is abuse, neglect in Tarrant County? So Tarrant County is growing mm -hmm. and that's a great thing, but with that comes some problems so Tarrant big city Co problems i tell yeah, people that yeah. all the time that we're a big city yeah. growing big county growing and with that comes big city yeah. urban problems so we have the third highest number of confirmed cases of child abuse and neglect in the state wow. behind dallas and harris counties okay. and that was 5506 confirmed even cases. bigger than travis and bigger and than travis bear, and, bear. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's it's all it's Fort Worth. It's mostly Fort Worth is the biggest city, but it's all across the county. And it's we tell people it's in every socioeconomic, every neighborhood. People right. have problems. There's substance abuse, mental health issues, um, and so when you can help families stabilize those right. problems, you you can help reunite the family. Yeah. But it that's is. It is. A, it is. A quite a big problem here in Tarrant County. Yeah, and I think you alluded to it. There are other social ills that are probably. Right. Um, uh, uh, causing some of these issues. Yeah, it's that, never one thing. It's right. a combination of a lot of things, and that's what we saw in COVID, that the numbers went up, but there was just so much additional strain mm -hmm. on things that were already there. Right. How did that, I, I think through a lot of times, it's reported through the school. Right. And kids weren't physically in school. Yeah. Did you see a drop off in numbers and then exponentially grow, go up yes. after COVID? Yes. And how did y'all handle that as an organization? So we had, the community really stepped up for, in a big way for us okay. during 2020, especially, and there were reports in the news about some severe cases that were at Cook Children's mm -hmm. and, and then concern right. that because children were not in school that they were not seeing some problems. Teachers were maybe missing out on some things that they normally would have seen. Um, and that coverage helped us recruit a lot of new volunteers to make sure that we had those eyes and ears on kids that we thought were in vulnerable situations. That's wonderful. What, this being the 40th year, y'all undertaking yeah. some big projects to help? help? We're doing yeah. some big marketing things this year okay. to have more community awareness, have people know what CASA is, what we do in the community, and the importance of what we do. Um, another initiative that we've seen that's really important, um, we've started a black hair care initiative. Okay. Um, so helping foster children with textured hair learn how to do their hair, teaching foster families what they need, um, yeah. getting products donated for them. There's just, there's so many things you don't think about sure. when you're in foster care and when you are removed from your family, you're removed from your culture too. And so something that I don't includes, think people think about for sure. it's not something that people think about, but it includes um, your, your culture, your, it can be language. So, yeah. you know, we need more people of color, Spanish speaking volunteers, um, because that's another thing that makes kids feel isolated is right. to be removed from that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. What, what do you need? It sounds yeah. like volunteers yeah. and elaborate on that. Right. What do you, yeah. So volunteers, um, you just and tell have, me about how you, what's the training program right. and how you get so through this, how you, to you be just get started by attending an info session, okay. an information session. And right now those are online. Okay. So you can go to our website website. What's that website? It's speakupforachild.org. Okay. okay. And you can do, um, click on the volunteer page and see what dates that we have those information sessions. Um, and that, that will start your journey. We'll tell you what's needed, what the volunteer expectations are. Um, and then it's 30 hours of training that's okay. spread over an entire month. Okay. Uh, you're sworn in by a judge, so you're very official. And what does the training consist of? Is it classroom? Is it, what, what does it look it's like? It's classroom okay. and we're back in person. So you get to 
meet other people in your class and it's we don't expect our volunteers to know anything about social work, anything about foster care. You don't have to be an attorney. So we're going to teach you those things. Okay. What the foster care system looks like, what to expect. We have a whole night explaining trauma and wow. how that affects children so that you can understand that. And then if the people involved in the case, if teachers, foster parents don't really understand the behaviors or things that are happening with children to say, hey, I learned about this mm -hmm. in my training. Here's some resources that might be helpful and you can connect them with that. Um, so we'll give you all the tools you need to be successful to do this work. That's great. You mentioned also you're sworn in by a judge, yes. it's official. Yes. And how does that work out as a ceremony? Uh, it's it's it gives me chills every time yeah. for all these people to stand up and raise their right hand and, and basically just say, I, I promise to be here for these children to advocate for their best interests. Right. Um, and it, it makes everybody stand up a little straighter and know that they're doing something really important and that judges in Tarrant County recognize this is important and they want to hear from our volunteers when they're in their courtroom. That's, that's wonderful. And with that, just in your 40, what message would you like to send to people uh, yeah. just about the organization, about how they, and just about the organization? CASA is such a, a wonderful organization that impacts so many people, um, can affect generations, mm -hmm. can break cycles of abuse and trauma. Um, and it, foster care and child abuse is hard. Um, it's, a, it's an issue that not everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. And so we want to bring that kind of darkness into the light and mm. say yes there are issues but we we're an organization that helps mm. um, kids move past that trauma and into a healthier sta more stable place yeah. we were founded in fort worth um, by the junior league of fort worth and federation of jewish women okay. so we're just we're thankful mm. that we were started here and uh thankful for all the donors and volunteers that have supported us the last 40 years and look forward to continuing they're still in need and so we're we're ready to try to meet that challenge. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for what you do. And um, I often, as a you know, father of adopted twins, right. um, often know uh, how important it is and the resources that we need to give to these right. children. So um, they didn't pick the situations that they, exactly. they're in. That, so we have to do what we can to protect them. So yeah. I'm thankful for you and an organization like CASA making sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for your time. And now I'm joined by Kim Sisson, who is president of Collections Fine Jewelry. How are you doing, Kim? Good morning. I'm doing good. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for being me. here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, out of full disclosure, we yes. have to tell people that we've been friends for, a I'm not going to tell your age. No, but <laughs> a, a long, long time. time. <laughs> a long time. Um, back to uh, Wayside Middle School uh, yes. up north. So, yes. Um, and so I've been proud uh, to know you for this long and see the business grow and that your mom and stepdad started and yeah. see it sort of just take off. And so tell us a little bit about how you decided as a career you wanted to go into the jewelry business. Yeah. So, you know, as you know, my mom started yeah. the business when we were just toddlers. Yes. So. What, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah a long, toddler, time ago, yeah. long time ago. Um, in 1983, actually. Yeah, yeah. And as the story goes, she actually, she sold her first made her first sale while she was sitting on the floor waiting for them to come and uh, set the phones up. Okay. So, okay. you know, kind of this funny story of how everything came into it. And so my sister and I always grew up in the business. Um, I remember when we were younger, uh, holidays are always the busiest time of the year. Yeah. And so we would go after school. Uh, we would go late into the night during the holidays. And our job was to either talk to the jewelers to keep them awake while yeah. they were working late yeah. or to deliver coffee. So we grew up there. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't always expected that we would come back to it. But uh, after I graduated from tech and then went on and was at TCU, I would come back to help my mom do different projects. Uh -huh. Um, little things that you know a small business doesn't always have systems development and processes and things like that and after I graduated from TCU um, she said hey you're still in the middle of these projects do you think you could stick around and just help me out for a little bit yeah. longer and I said sure uh -huh. and that was a couple of decades ago <laughs> I'm still working she on sort of lured projects. you into it she sure did yeah she sure did well for a lot of people that don't know exactly where you're located yes t tell us a little bit about the a area and let's, you know, the old OP store that was next oh door. Oh my Tell gosh, that was it. my first job, the OP prep <laughs> yeah, store, yes. which was fantastic. I mean, Saginaw, let's think back in the yeah. 1980s, yeah. and I was actually thinking about this the other day. In the 1980s, I think the census reported about 6,000 people yeah, in living Saginaw. in Saginaw, this yeah. little sleeper bedroom community where people 
lived there but commuted. Right. Um, I think the 2019 census has us at about 25, 26,000 people, wow. Wow. which is still That's kind of small, but considering how fast that growth has been, right. you know, you've gone from having little bitty OP prep shop to now having this large community that's growing. So it's been sweet to see um, that it still maintains that kind of cute, close community-esque feel. Right. Um, however, the high school that we grew up, we used to jokingly say on all four sides was nothing but fields and cows. That's right. The, yeah. And today it's nothing but- The school next but, to the cow, Boswell High School for right, everybody watching. Right, the school yes, with yes, the cows. Yes, yes, yeah. um, and, and now it's nothing but residential mm -hmm. around there. So it's developed nicely. It's developed and, and a lot, which is great for your business as part right. of that. And so Absolutely. you said 83, we're basically, it's 40 years. It'll be 40 so years tell, this June. tell us about the changes of a business over 40 years, building this small business and you know, selling on the floor, yeah. waiting for the phones to yeah. what you're doing now and all the parts of it. So it's not just the jewelry business, you also have CFG man manufacturing. So talk about that. You a are bit. right. Yeah. So it was everything always grew very organically. And you know, and being here in Fort Worth with all of the great commercial businesses that we have, um, what started as clients would come in for jewelry would then come in and say, you know what, at our company, we do these lapel pins. Right. And like they're, this. yes, like Molly. This is where we get the Molly pins, everybody. <laughs> so, yes. And so, um, and so people would come in and and they'd say, can you do that? Can you do a sales incentive? Can we do a ring? Can we do a gift with a clock or a watch or crystal bowl? Mm -hmm. And that very organically grew into employee rewards and recognition. So okay. now you're opening that up to um, corporations. Mm -hmm. That then grew up into, hey, collections, we trust you to put our logo and our brand on this clock, this watch, this whatever. Can we then do it on a pen, a pencil, a hat, a cap? And that turned into promotional and branded merchandise. Naturally, that then turned into our most latest um, growing sector, which is corporate uniforms, corporate industrial uniforms so we've got roughly from the corporate doing, space yeah yeah, yeah okay. from the corporate space we now have clients in about 160 countries wow um, and and that's been a lot of fun to see right. that natural growth to see it just grow as, as a part I'm of telling it. you it's been you just you you keep your nose down and you just keep working and um you know a lot of people ask how does that work and and you kind of you can appreciate this yeah. you've got to work your business like you don't have a backup plan that's right right when because it, right. when you yeah, own it yeah. you've got to work it like you don't right. have a backup plan and when you do that then you're all in right um right. and you've got nowhere to go but positive well and that speaking of that um you're now on the radar with um, Jewel Charity Ball this uh, year as yeah. the, the exclusive jeweler for Jewel Charity. Tell us yes. about that process and how that works. And I, I'm, congratulations, that's a Thank big you. deal yeah. for people that, that hear that know. But yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I think that's probably one of the highest honors that yeah. we've received within the Fort Worth community is being asked um, to be the signature jeweler for Jewel yeah. Charity. Um, we've gotten a chance to participate and to assist and, and to donate over the course of our 39 plus years. But this year is really something kind of special. We've got some amazing amazing clients who are also members of Jewel Charity. Mm -hmm. And so when they made the decision this year, we'd like a local jeweler. Yeah. Um, and then they recommended us out of all the amazing local jewelers yeah. in Fort Worth. Uh, our name came to the table. It was uh, it was an amazing honor. We're looking forward to it. That's yeah. great. Well, yeah. it'll be a, it's always a fun time and um, all the, the, the sparkly things that are out there. All the sparkly that things. I cannot afford for Joanna. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but you know what, that's the great yes, thing. Yeah. We have always prided ourselves, Michael, on making exquisite jewelry that everyone can afford. It is true, it so, is true. Yes. And uh, you know, my ring was made there, yes. wedding ring, Joanna's wedding ring yes. was made there. Yeah. So lots of great memories, uh, I know, for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and talk, tell us, that, what's the best part about working with your clients? Uh, I mean, you know, I feel like jewelry evokes a memory, mm -hmm. right? You look at a piece and you're like, oh, this is my gra this was my grandmother's ring. Right. Um, you know, the ring that you did for Joanna, like it, it shares a memory, it invokes a memory and emotion. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, there's such a great people side yeah. to jewelry and a story side. And I think just getting the opportunity to be involved in that yeah. is heartwarming. I had a friend of ours who we both went to high school with mm -hmm. who came in and he said, it's my wife and I's 25th anniversary. And I was like, I was so touched, so honestly touched that he would say, I'd like for you to help me with that. Yeah. Um, so what really is cool right now, though. That might be a hint to Joanna. We've got a 25 coming wink, up in wink. a couple she years. Just, yeah. <laughs> and she just had a birthday. She may so. not stick with me for another couple of years. So that's a whole other oh, story. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. Um, okay, so what's really cool is clients that started with us, like yeah. with my mom in the early 80s, yeah. we've now seen their children come in, and we're now starting to see their third generation of mm -hmm. children come in. Wow. And, um, how awesome is that it is. to be a part of three generations of Fort Worth families yeah. that we get to share in these experiences and these memories. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I've focused on a, a lot um, as with the city council at my tenure is, is helping small businesses yeah. and really looking at how we make the processes better for them, yep. uh, make it smoother. 
Uh, what advice would you give to someone that has a small business, running a small business, wants to start a small business, all those things? What would you, what, what, what would you, uh, you know, give us some tips. I think the first one, like I mentioned earlier, is you've got to run it like you don't have a plan B. Mm -hmm. You know, and for a lot of people who start a small business, they don't have a plan B. So you've got that going for you. Right. Um, so, you know, my mom has always said failure is not an option. And for her, you know, she was a newly single mom with a couple of kids. When she started the business, failure wasn't an option. Uh, so I think when you run it like you don't have a backup plan, um, you get it ingrained in your head that I've got to do the right thing for the customer. I've got to do the right thing for the, for the employees. Mm -hmm. And if you take care of that piece of it, mm -hmm. then the store will take care of you. Right. The other thing to that is I feel like you've got to run your business like a good marriage, like a good mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. Um, there are going to be days where it's hard and you've got to just grind it out and work mm -hmm. through it. And there are days where it's going to be easy. And on those days, you're still going to grind it out <laughs> and true. work through it. That is true. So, true. but at the end of the day, if you're providing the right product and you're doing it from an altruistic perspective. Like my mom never wanted to overcharge people when it came to jewelry. She always wanted it to be reasonable. She wanted people in our community to be able to enjoy nice jewelry that they can wear every day yeah. for a reasonable price. Right. Um, and so I think when you get into it for the right reason like that, it, yeah. it'll always take care of you. That's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for what you're doing and really appreciate our something something plus years of friendship that, I <laughs> that nobody say. needs to that know no one the needs number. to know but thank you again for being here oh well thank you i appreciate it thanks for inviting me yep. well i hope you've enjoyed this episode of fort worth forward here at the culinary school of fort worth scott natalie and kim were great guests and doing some great things here in fort worth and one of the great things about being at the culinary school is that they made this great cake for me to eat so i am going to dig into it and we'll see you at the next episode thank you